Okay. This is a good question. Um, you know, according to FERPA, and then aspects of FERPA are also included in the IDEA uh, as an additional safeguard for parents. But if you if you make a written request for your child's educational records, then at that point, the school system has up to 45 days to uh, provide those to you. Now, technically, what the definition is in the law is that you have a right to review and inspect your child's educational records. Now, a right to review and inspect your child's educational records would um, mean that you would need to come down to the school to, you know, and then have them provide you access to your child's records. And then you would have that opportunity to review and inspect. That's what the law says. But at the same time, there's also that very common practice that a school will provide a complimentary copy to the parents. Some schools will provide or will charge a nominal fee, which they're allowed to do, but nominal is the operative word. And if a, if a parent um, uh, does not have the resources to even pay the nominal fee, then it's supposed to throw back on the school system that you know the parents' rights uh, and their ability to engage in a protected activity, which is advocacy for their child, uh, would trump the, uh, the the nominal fee. So all of those things would come in. But the technical term is that you have a right to 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 review and inspect your child's records. Um, school, some schools will sit there and say, well, you know, we're, we're not going to make a copy. You can review and inspect it, but we're not going to make you a copy. If your school is like that, then, you know, simple way around it is, you know, you get yourself a little portable uh, uh, scanner. I've had to do that, even as an attorney, with a particular school system that, uh, you know, they have somebody watching over me as I'm uh, reviewing and inspecting my client's uh, record. Now, they'll provide me a copy, but they won't provide me a copy until five days before the hearing, which is what the law says on that end. Well, how can I represent my client if I'm only looking at the records five days before a hearing? The entire goal is to resolve the case, so I need all the information starting back here. You know, I just do not understand that, but oh well. I mean, they're a horrible, obstinate school district, so, you know, uh, to each their own. It, it's one of the few school systems that when parents ask me, you know, uh, well, what I, that, that's my simple thing is, and until their director and their attorney go the way of the dodo, uh, move. You know, you can't salvage that kind of intended evil. You know, so in your particular situation, then, you know, if they're past that timeline or you got most of the records, but they refuse to hand over, let's say, the emails or the communications, uh, number one is how did you ask for them? Because you're entitled to everything that's personally identifiable to your child, and that would include internal emails um, discussing your child if they are personally identifiable to your child. Uh, you they would be part of the education record but you have to be very specific in what you're requesting the other thing is is that they typically don't hand those over to parents um, uh, without some resistance why well because who wants you know who who wants somebody reading their emails uh, if it's about your child um, you know so a lot of schools will sit there and say well you know education records is really this you know they acknowledge that this additional stuff, because it's personally identifiable, may, but they, some of them will make you run the gauntlet, um, you know, meaning that you need to, to take the extra step of getting somebody like an attorney involved to, uh, to push that a little bit further so that you can get those. Um, so the principal, she won't be releasing the records. Do you know of an attorney in Vegas that I could hire to assist? Well, as luck would have it, I do um, have I, somebody in mind, and that is uh, uh, <laughs> Gina Lowe that happens to work with us. Uh, she is licensed to practice law in, in, in Las Vegas or in Nevada. Um, she, we haven't announced that we're in Nevada. Um, simply because uh, you know Gina's my my right hand and I mean she helps me in every state 
uh, New Mexico, uh, Tennessee, Alabama. And, and so we just haven't had the time to be able to establish uh, an office in, in Nevada, um, even though that is where Gina physically lives. So Gina lives in, in uh, Nevada. Um, and depending on what you're needing, yeah, I, I think that she would be happy to assist you in uh, getting whatever you need. You know that there are inappropriate emails regarding your son, and this is why she's refusing to release them. Um, yeah, and so in a situation like that, I completely get what you're saying. So, uh, well, you'll just need to, to contact us, um, info, info at the Galini group.com. All right, info at the Galini group.com. And then what I can do is direct this over to Gina and then she can, uh, she can contact you and see what she can do to help you. Okay.